Okay, I think this is officially my new favorite spot to film. It's on the quieter side, not too many people around, and not a bad view. What is going on guys? Hope you guys are having an amazing day. Today, we're going to be talking about used cars. This is a topic I've been thinking about the last few days. With everything going on in the world, there's been a major, major part shortage and a major supply chain issue, which has really jacked up the prices for used cars. There's just so much to think about when it comes to used cars. There's so many different types of cars, different manufacturers, different mileages, different price ranges. How do you really know if a car is good or not? Well, today I'm going to give you some tips, some hints, some of my comments on what to look for when you're buying a used car. I've owned several cars over the last few years, purchased several used cars, and I've definitely learned a thing or two. Before I get into specifics, here are some general points to keep in mind. You must test drive the car. The reason I say this, and it might sound kind of silly, but there are people I know that have bought cars without even driving them. Check the car in daylight. Do not go to see a used car in the night. There are so many things that you can catch in the daytime, especially when it comes to doing a full visual inspection of the car. Before you even go to see the car, do some research online as to common issues with the specific make and model of the car that you're looking for. That will give you an idea as to whether you even wanna check this car out or even pursue this kind of make or model. There are certain cars out there which are just known to have design flaws, which ultimately leads to reliability issues down the road. Another thing that a lot of people miss is looking at the underside of a car. Now granted, it's not the easiest thing to do, especially if you don't have a mechanic friend. Not the most practical thing either to bring your jack and jack stands to, to every used car you go to see. But if it's possible, definitely get a look underneath the car as it tells you a lot about the condition. Now this is something that a lot of people do know about is a Carfax report or a car history report, depending on where you are in the world. It tells you what kind of service has been done on the vehicle, if there's any accidents, any, uh, any police reports associated with that VIN number. The Carfax report will give you a full history of the vehicle and it will tell you how many owners have also owned the car before you. It is near impossible to know every single thing about a car. But I guarantee you the tips that I'm going to give you today are going to help you make a more confident choice. And to help explain these points, I'm going to be using my Honda Civic as an example. I've owned this car for several years now and it's got about 165,000 kilometers on it. So this will definitely give you a good idea of what a typical used car would look like. So with that said, let's get started. Five things to look for when buying a used car. Tip number one, the powertrain. And what I mean by that is the engine and the transmission. First thing I like to do is pop open the hood in order to get a good look at the engine bay. The goal here is to look for a healthy engine and transmission. What does that mean exactly? We're looking for no leaks, a normal car engine sound, and smooth shifting when driving the car. Take a good look at the engine and transmission, specifically the engine block. There should be no wet spots or fluid buildup such as oil residue, especially around the joints and seals. While you're in there, it doesn't hurt to take a look at some of the other parts as well. Oil residue is not normal unless the car has been treated for rust protection. Next step I like to take is start the car and get a good listen to the engine. There should be no squealing or any sort of rough sound when the engine is at idle or during startup. Give the engine a few revs as well while you're at it. Oftentimes leaks are more visible as the engine is running. So what I like to do is back the car up and take a good look at the ground. You're looking for wet spots on the ground directly underneath where the car was just parked. All right, time to go for a test drive. Don't be afraid to really push the car with some aggressive steering angles and some high engine revs. 
pay attention to engine noise and how the transmission is shifting. Make sure to go on the highway to get a better feel of the car at higher speeds. Tip number two, wheels and tires. This area of the car has the more wear and tear components, things like tires, brakes, and suspension parts. Start with checking the tread. If you've ever seen a brand new tire, then you'll know what the tread should look like. You don't really need a depth gauge. Also make sure to check the exact brand of each tire. Check for consistency among all four tires. If they don't all match, you might want to question why they're different. It could have been a tire puncture at some point. Which brings me to my next point. Check for tire punctures. You want to make sure that each tire is in good working condition. Okay, let's look at the brakes. Visually inspect the brake rotors to make sure that there's no unusual rust or any cracks. When you go for your test drive, don't be shy to slam the brakes. This will give you a real good indication if the brakes are good or not. Over here, you see some scrape marks on the brake rotors. This is because my brake caliper had seized several months ago, so I'm very well aware of this problem. But if this is something you see when doing your inspection, bring this up with the current owner to find out what happened. So it's also important to check the brake calipers to see if they're rusty and old. One more thing to check is whether the wheels are OEM. The original wheels should have the correct emblem. Now let's take a look at what's happening behind the wheel. Look at some of the suspension components, the control arms, the bushings. See if there's any excessive rust. This may be difficult to do, so turning the front wheels to one side will definitely help. Again, on your test drive, go over some real bumpy roads to hear for any rattles or squeaking sounds. Take a look at the struts as well, or as some people call them, shock absorbers. Make sure there's no leaking fluids or any wet spots, which may indicate a faulty part. Tip number three, the exterior condition. The goal here is to see how well the car has been taken care of on the outside. Check for scratches in the paint, scuff marks, dents in different body panels, rust, scratches or rock chips on the different glass parts like the windshield and other windows. What you see here are white marks on the paint and this is a very well known clear coat issue for this generation of Honda Civic. This stresses the importance of doing your research beforehand. Here you'll notice that I've spotted a scuff mark in the paint right above the rear driver side wheel. The same clear coat issue seems to be happening on the trunk as well. I've also spotted a dent and a bit of rust on the passenger side uh, lower panel just below the door, which indicates a possible accident of some kind. Check for the same kind of scuff marks and chips on the wheels themselves as well. Something else I'd like to do is open up all the doors, trunk and the hood and just take a good visual look. Sometimes you can spot things that you might miss otherwise. Things such as symmetry, if one door is not opening the same as the other, it might indicate that that door was replaced at some point. Another way to tell whether a body panel or part is original is to check for OEM labels. A lot of parts have a label such as this one, as you see here, a VIN number label, or here, as you can see on the driver's side window, a OEM manufacturer label. Here on the driver door panel, you'll see a bunch of more labels, some of the more official labels, which also have some more information such as tire pressure, uh, weight of the car, where the car was manufactured. So definitely check for these labels. To take it a step further, we're going to check for consistent gaps between the body panels when you compare the driver's side to the passenger side. If something seems off, it could mean that that panel was replaced at some point. Next, let's check for consistent paint colors between the body panels as well. Again, we're trying to determine if anything was replaced due to an accident. 
So take a look at all the different panels from one panel to the next and make sure the paint color is consistent. Okay, now we're gonna check for a car's probably number one enemy, which is rust. The goal here is to inspect areas where moisture can be trapped. So areas such as underneath the door and also around the rubber seals on the doors. You simply want to pull back the seal with your fingers to check if there's any rust in between the seal and the metal. Here I found a rust spot on the panel itself. So definitely make sure to check the panels, areas such as where the door hinges are. Check the roof seals as well, especially if the car has a sunroof like this Honda Civic. This is the rust spot I pointed out to earlier, which I suspect is due to a collision and not, uh, not moisture. I found some more rust on the passenger side door right under the seal. Okay, last spot to check is underneath the car, where you are more likely to see rust buildup. It's hard to get a good look when the car is on the ground and not on a hoist, but really try your best to get a look underneath the car. Tip number four, the interior. As soon as you open the door, take note of how clean the interior is. This is an indication of how well the current owner or the previous owners have kept the car. Start by checking some of the high touch areas. Areas such as the seat adjustment levers, the driver's side door. Like for example here, you see that I found some scratches on the plastic parts. Also around the window buttons and some more scratches. And of course, the steering wheel. Take a look at the dashboard to check for faded color or cracks. Another high touch area is of course the shift lever. Check all the other plastic trim for scuff marks and overall condition. Don't forget to look up and check the roof lining. This is something a lot of people actually forget to do. Check for tears in the lining or any possible stains. Since this car has a sunroof, I'm going to open up the interior panel and check for any cracks in the rubber seals or even possible water buildup. The last thing you want is a leaky sunroof. Next thing to do is to make sure all of the buttons work. Buttons for the windows, the lock, the infotainment system, the HVAC controls, the cruise control if the car has one, and the wipers. An important thing to check also is the instrument cluster. Make sure there aren't any abnormal warning lights on, such as a check engine light. Double check the mileage on the odometer versus what was listed in the ad. Another thing which a lot of people miss is the spare tire in the trunk. Head to the trunk lift up the carpet lining and make sure the spare tire and all the tools are there. You don't want to be stranded somewhere with a flat tire and find out then that you don't actually have a spare tire. Tip number five, check those fluids. Fluids keep the mechanical components lubricated and functioning well. The main fluid will be your engine oil. You also have power steering fluid brake fluid, and in this case, clutch fluid. Check the oil level and the color. This will help give you an indication if oil changes were generally done on time. It's not 100% accurate, but it's still worth to take a look and just see what's going on with the oil. The level should be correct on the dipstick and the color of the oil should be a translucent golden brown color. Next, let's take a look at the power steering fluid. The fluid shouldn't be too dark or murky. There shouldn't be any bubbles visible in the fluid. If there are, that means that there is a leak in the hydraulic system. Okay, now on to the brake fluid. The same rule applies. The fluid should be somewhat translucent and not dark in color. And the level should be appropriate as well. Same thing goes for the clutch fluid if your car has a manual transmission. 
make sure to not get any fluids on your hands or the car itself as these fluids can be mildly corrosive that wraps it up guys five things to look for when buying a used car the idea is to learn as much as possible about the car that you're going to potentially buy all these points are just things to look out for whether you buy the car or not that's entirely up to you and what i mean by that is that if there is a thing or two wrong with the car it doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy it for example if there is a button or two that's not working on the interior that is not a critical issue and it really depends on how far you're willing to go or what you're willing to compromise on because at the end of the day it is very rare to find a perfect used car i'll say it again it's impossible to know every single thing but you have to do your best to make an informed decision without tools or without even having an access to a mechanic i hope the points in this video help you with making that decision thank you for watching like comment subscribe you know the drill and i'll see you in the next one